Episode B, The Heartland Model. Introduction. We need to look at two topics that shed some light on an inner LDS battle. Where did the Book of Mormon geographically take place? And is there evidence for it where the assumed locations are? The first issue at hand is where did the Book of Mormon take place, as there is no official answer from the LDS Church. According to their official website, they post the following. Some believe that the history depicted in the Book of Mormon, with the exception of the events in the Near East, occurred in North America, while others believe that it occurred in Central America or South America. Although church members continue to discuss such theories today, the church's only position is that the events the Book of Mormon describes took place in the ancient Americas. There are two contending hypotheses for the location of the Book of Mormon. One is the Heartland model, the other being Mesoamerica, and both present several issues. Let's take a look at the Heartland model, as most LDS members are aware of the Mesoamerican model. Part 1. The Heartland Model Fair LDS states, Joseph Smith made several statements about Book of Mormon geography. The content of his statements changed over time. Some wish us to accept earlier statements by Joseph as prophetic and binding, while ignoring the content of later statements which do not match their personal theories. They attack those who disagree with them as discounting and disdaining Joseph, while ignoring that their theories likewise discount later statements made by Joseph. This statement concerns the Book of Mormon geography, of course, and as you can see, Fair openly admits to the issues of different views on locations. Why would members assume that Joseph connected America to the Book of Mormon? Well, our first telling of the Book of Mormon and characters came in the form of the Moroni Visitation, where Smith claimed golden plates were located at a hill near his home. Joseph Smith Jr. claimed to have found the golden plates in a hill at Palmyra, New York. This hill really did not have a name until Joseph's claims and earned the nickname as Golden Bible Hill or Mormon Hill by local nun LDS since 1829. To the LDS members it was known as the Hill Cumorah or the Hill of Cumorah and where the last great battle between the Book of Mormon people took place. According to Smith's account of his Moroni visitation, this was the final resting place of the abridged accounting of those peoples. Smith asserted that this so-called angel said hundreds of thousands fought a great battle and died there. As you can see, the first claims made by Joseph Smith placed the Book of Mormon within New York State, not Latin America. We will see that Smith will follow with these claims for a while longer. The unofficial view of the church is that Mesoamerica fits the descriptions within the Book of Mormon and thus must be where it had taken place, though they are not positive. This leaves the issue of how did the abridged records Smith claimed he got from an angel get from Mesoamerica up to a hill in Upper New York State. Book of Mormon Evidence, a non-profit affiliation with the church, put out in an article concerning the Cumorah Cave, and I quote, There really was a cave of records in the Hill Cumorah in upstate New York. Joseph Smith and many others visited it. It has been spoken of all throughout church history. It was not somewhere in Mesoamerica. It was in the Hill Cumora in Ontario County, New York. Below are quotes offering strong indication that the hill where the Jaredites and the Nephites were destroyed is also the hill where Joseph found the plates and where a great depository of records of both races were held. End quote. We'll, we'll get into the cave in another episode, but the point I am showing is that even the modern view of the Hill Cumora is completely unclear. The church's volunteer apologetic website clearly states the hill is in the United States, not Mexico or Central America, where the current main belief is where the events took place. This is a major contradiction and a reason Heartland proponents reject it, claiming church historians and scholars have hijacked the church's history. Former Quorum of the Twelve member, an important figure in LDS theology, Bruce R. McConkie stated, both the Nephite and the Jaredite civilizations fought their final great wars of extinction at and near the Hill Cumora, or Rama as the Jaredites termed it, which hill is located between Palmyra and Manchester in the western part of the state of Joseph Smith, Oliver Cowdery, and many early brethren who were familiar with the circumstances attending the coming forth of the Book of Mormon in this dispensation have left us pointed testimony as to the identity and location of Cumora, or Rama. Though we have many statements, 
and we will look at them concerning the location of the Book of Mormon. The majority of LDS scholars, historians, and archaeologists all maintain a two-cumora hypothesis, where one is in Upper New York State, while the other is in Mesoamerica. The reasoning for this is that there has never been any evidence found supporting a battle of any size in Upper New York State, as the Book of Mormon proposes. Unfortunately for the LDS Church, there has never been any archaeological evidence in Mesoamerica either. While researching the Heartland model several years back, I came across a fair article concerning the matter. It contained several quotes about Joseph's Book of Mormon views on geography, which is as follows. Quote number one, Since Moroni offered Joseph Smith only a brief sketch, it is unlikely that he revealed to Joseph a comprehensive knowledge of Native American origins. It is important to understand that Joseph Smith did not have access to this knowledge. He translated the book, but apparently did not know the scope of its geography. Name withheld. Note, this quote is from LDS scholar Matthew Roper. Quote number two. Exactly what Joseph Smith believed at different times in his life concerning Book of Mormon geography in general is also indeterminable. I think it's quite clear where Joseph Smith thought it was. Evidently, Joseph Smith's views on this matter were open to further knowledge. Name withheld. Note, this quote is from LDS scholar Kenneth W. Godfrey. Quote number three. The historical sources give no indication that Moroni's instructions to the young Joseph Smith included geography, nor did Joseph Smith claim inspiration on the matter. Ideas he later expressed about the location of events reported in the book apparently reflected his own best thinking. Name withheld. Note. This quote is from LDS scholar John Sorensen. Did you notice that the names of those who originally made the comments are being withheld? We only get the name of the people quoting the original source. Why is it we do not get the original people's names? Even without Joseph giving us his own accounts on places like Zelf's burial mount, the Book of Mormon alone should be able to tell us where the events took place as we get detailed geography from the book itself. Since the Hill Kumora is the location of the last battle, this should be our starting point, and in some way it is, but it really isn't. Let's take a look at what the Book of Mormon tells us and see if it matches up to the Heartland model, or Mesoamerica, or neither. Part 2 Looking at Geography According to the Heartland model, the two different parties of the Book of Mormon characters landed within what is today known as the Gulf of Mexico. If you look at the map, you will notice the two brown lines at the bottom, indicating the posited landing sites. There is a reasoning for it, though it is also flawed in several ways. Let's have a look. We are told that the Jaredites and Lehi's family crossed the Atlantic Ocean, which both camps agree upon. The Heartland model proposes that what is now modern-day Mississippi and Florida are the locations and that there are earth mounds to prove their case. We will look at that soon, but first, let's challenge the voyage. If both parties landed in the alleged locations, then that would rule out the Heartland model very quickly. Notice where the Gulf of Mexico is, and then locate the Great Lakes, where you will find the different seas spoken of in the Book of Mormon. The sea south is Lake Erie, quite the distance from the Gulf. How can the sea south be so far from where they landed? They should have come in from the sea south, which would in return allow them to have a west sea and east sea, which the Mesoamerican model provides. It is argued by Fair that a sea is not the same as an ocean, and to the ancients of biblical times that would have been something they were not so aware of. The largest body of water to the Israelis was the Mediterranean Sea, but they used the name sea for such bodies of water like the Sea of Galali, the Dead Sea, though they did have larger bodies of water than what we call nothing more than lakes today. The Sea of Galali and the Dead Sea are both small lakes, whereas the Red Sea is much larger. The point being, the Book of Mormon only speaks on one sea south, so how can it be Lake Erie? It cannot be. Another issue with the sea hypothesis is that we have five great lakes, yet we only get told of four bodies of water, and that does not make logical sense. Lake Superior is left out being mentioned, yet it connects to Lake Huron, which is supposed to be the sea north. So those people should be aware of another sea, yet they are not. The West and East Seas are supposed to be on either side of a narrow stretch of land, which leads to the land of desolation. 
Yet when looking at the Great Lakes region again, we see that the West Sea has a body of land between it and the sea north. The Book of Mormon does not speak of another body of land between the narrow land and West Sea. This is a major issue. That land is modern-day Michigan. The Heartland model places the land of desolation moving up into Canada, which would be southern Quebec. Not to beat the horse, but Michigan should not be between the North Sea and land of desolation. This was an error on the Heartland model, and Smith obviously. Part 3 The Mound Builders The Heartland model supports the United States due to a rich culture of mount building that took place within the Midwest, Eastern U.S., and Canada from pre-Columbian times. These mounds do date back to the time period of the proposed Book of Mormon, but they in fact go back to even further than the Book of Mormon time frame and extend well past the supposed end of the Book of Mormon peoples. These sites have been and continue to be researched and new finds being produced all the time. Archaeologists and historians are getting a good concept of these peoples. There was a belief that a tribe of Israel, or some white-skinned race, must be responsible for these structures and cultures, that there was no way the Native Americans could do such a thing. This was the common belief in Joseph's time, as View of the Hebrews was a popular book Smith would have had access to, and the manuscript found also covered such issues. Archaeologists have yet to find any items that are described within the Book of Mormon. There has been no wheels, no chariots, no armor, no swords, nothing found to date to support these mound builders were the Book of Mormon peoples. Neither have any signs of asserted crops or animal remains have been found that are named within the Book of Mormon. Trash heaps shifted through do not show any signs of wheat, animal bones to match Book of Mormon animals. We have zero for it all around. These cultures go back to approx 8000 BCE and lasted to around the 1600s. One of the cultures that post-dated the Book of Mormon period according to the Smithsonian. Around 1100 or 1200 AD, the largest city north of Mexico was Cahokia, sitting in what is now southern Illinois, across the Mississippi River from St. Louis. Built around 1050 AD and occupied through 1400 AD, Cahokia had a peak population of between 25,000 and 50,000 people. There is a lot more information on the Mississippian culture, but we do not have time to go over it all. I highly suggest the viewer to go out and learn about the period and discoveries. Part 4 Statements Made We have many instances of where Joseph himself made statements that could be taken no other way than to confirm the location of the Book of Mormon. Outside Joseph stating that the hill he found the golden plates in was the same hill as that of the last Book of Mormon battle. We have other direct statements. In June of 1834, while marching with Zion's camp to Missouri, Joseph and many of the leaders stated what they believed to be Nephite relics. Joseph wrote to Emma while on his journey and recounted the following to her. Wandering over the plains of the Nephites, recounting occasionally the history of the Book of Mormon, picking up their skulls and their bones as a proof of its divine authenticity. Then Apostle and a member of Zion's Army's party, Heber C. Kimball, stated of Smith's claim, was made known to Joseph that he had been an officer who fell in battle in the last destruction among the Lamanites, and his name was Zelf. This caused us to rejoice much, to think that God was so mindful of us as to show these things to his servant. Brother Joseph had inquired of the Lord, and it was made known in a vision. So we have the hill Cumorah and the land of Zelf pointing to a Heartland model, what else may have Smith or others said to lead the Heartland model to think so? While dedicating the Salt Lake City Temple on January 20, 1861, Brigham Young taught that the land of the Gadianton robbers was located in the Rockies. There are scores of evil spirits here, spirits of the old Gadianton robbers, some of whom inhabited these mountains and used to go into the south and afflict the Niphites. There are millions of those spirits in the mountains. Concerning Joseph Smith Sr. and Oliver B. Huntington related, My father was living in a good-hued log house in 1840 when one morning as the family all sat at breakfast old father Joseph Smith, the father of the prophet, came and sat down by the fireplace after declining to take breakfast with us. There he sat some little time in silence, looking steadily in the fire. At length he observed that we had been driven from Missouri to this place. 
He then asked this question, And how long, Brother Huntington, do you think we will stay here? And where do you think we will go to when we leave here, Brother Huntington? Father did not pretend to guess, unless we went back to Jackson County. No, said the old patriarch, his whole being seeming to be alive with animation. The Lord has told Joseph that when we leave here we will go into the Rocky Mountains, right into the midst of the Lamanites. The New Jerusalem, according to the Book of Mormon, will be built in the land of the Nephites, which Joseph asserted he received revelation concerning the location, which would be Jackson County, Missouri, the heartland of the United States. LDS Apostle Marion G. Romney stated on July 4, 1976, the New Jerusalem, the Land Bountiful, the Garden of Eden, and Adam on the Amman are all in Missouri, waiting for world's end, the diaries of Wilford Woodruff. This quote Romney used from a former prophet falls in line with what the Book of Mormon tells us. And now it came to pass that there were a great multitude gathered together of the people of Nephi, round about the temple which was in the Land Bountiful. 3 Nephi 11 verse 1 Several sources around Joseph Smith including himself, made statements of Book of Mormon lands being in the United States. So is it any wonder why there is a debate on where the Book of Mormon took place? Early church prophets placed the hill Cumorah, the land of Nephi, Zelp, the land of Bountiful, and the Gadianton robbers all within the heartland of the United States. Part 5. U.S. Cities Compared to Book of Mormon Cities I'll also propose that the original location of the Book of Mormon geography is in the U.S. due to the names of Book of Mormon cities that were used and how they match up nearly or exactly to names of places within Joseph's own area. I will be using the maps from the CES letter under the Fair Use Act, as the material is not mine. The only differences between the names are some spellings have been slightly altered. Alma, Valley of Alma, Antrim, Antum, Antioch, Ani, Anti, Boaz, Boaz, Helam, Helam, Jacobsburg, Jacobagath, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jordan, Jordan, Kishkimenetis, Kishkumen, Lehi, Lehi, Moravian Town, Morianan, Mantua, Manti. Rodney Meldrum, who is one of the leading supporters of the Heartland Hypothesis, believes that the city of Zarahemla was in Iowa based on Doctrine and Covenants 125, which states, Let them build up a city unto my name, upon the land opposite the city of Nauvoo and let the name of Zarahemla be named upon it. D and C. Fair, and other Mesoamerica proponents point out that Zarahemla would later be built across from Nauvoo, but only take on the name of Zarahemla, such as other places have taken on older names such as Carthage, Illinois, Athens, Georgia, Bountiful, Utah, and Rome, Texas. We also know via Brigham Young that there was a small town across from Nauvoo, which was referred to as Zarahemla before D&C 125. Young stated, Brothers Joseph, Hiram, and others came over the river to Montrose and went out on the prairie and looked out the site for a city for the saints, which was called Zarahemla. Heartland proponents believe that the second Zarahemla was built around the same location of the proposed original site of the Book of Mormon. Rod Meldrum and others have spent money trying to provide evidence and proof of Book of Mormon geography and the location of Zarahemla itself but they have produced nothing that is concrete, and what they have discovered is nowhere close to Book of Mormon claims. Conclusion A few years before his death in 1844, there was a boom in the Mesoamerican field of archaeology. It appears what Joseph had envisioned in his head, and what he heard from others, fit better located within Mesoamerica than it did North America. It also appears that church leaders, alongside historians, could also see the flaws in Smith's Heartland Project which never came to fruit, yet they have run with an alternative narrative instead, that of Mesoamerica. I hope you learned something new in this episode, and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please watch for future videos, and thank you so kindly for watching. This is the Ex-Mormon Informant signing off for the day.